Good morning, Finders Hedron. Happy Easter! It is Easter Sunday today, and I hope you woke up early, went out to the backyard to see if Jesus was there, if he had risen as he said he would. Yes, it is Easter Sunday. We can use our imagination to find Jesus around the house. I know lots of people who are going to be doing Easter egg hunts. I have hidden a few eggs around the house, but the most important thing is to find those eggs. And as a child of God, the most important thing is to find the love of God. So today, as we celebrate Easter, we are going to jump and dance. Why? Because Jesus is risen. So today is all about the Easter story and we're going to learn more about it later. But first, let us begin with a word of prayer. And Auntie Sue is going to open up in prayer for us. Over to you, Auntie Sue. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for this Easter Sunday morning when we can come together to celebrate your resurrection. Lord, we thank you that through your death and resurrection, we can have forgiveness and new life. We pray that you will bless us in Sunday school, that we would learn of you. We thank you for all the blessings you give us. We ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Auntie Sue, for the lovely prayer. So, what is Easter all about? Last week we had an event. We had an Easter event on Zoom. And we made lots of nice goodies that we all ate and enjoyed. But we also had a talk about Easter. Last Sunday was Palm Sunday. So it was the beginning of Holy Week. And we all know what Palm Sunday is about. How the uh, Jewish people put their clothes on the floor and palm branches as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And they were singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. So I hope you all enjoyed yourselves and had fun last week singing Hosanna together. So we are going to sing our first song this morning. And before we do, I have a little song for you. So it goes like this. The women went to the town, but they couldn't find Jesus. Oh yes, where has he gone to? He is risen and gone to Galilee. Oh yes, oh yes, he's gone to Galilee. That's my Easter song. I love singing that song and I love dancing um, to that song. So, what are we going to sing today? Over to you, Ben. Oh 
For that wonderful song. Woo! Today is a day of rejoicing. Today is a day of celebrating the love of God that He would send His only Son to come and die for us. It is a reason to celebrate every day. So we have to be joyful. We have to be full of love. We have to be full of peace because that is what Jesus died to give us. So without further ado, we are going to go into our Bible lesson where we'll learn all about Easter. Thank you. Hi Pride of Hebron, happy Easter. Today is such an important day because it marks the day that Jesus rose from the death and God conquered death. We now have a new hope of eternal life with God. So this means oh, that when- oh, sorry, I'm doing the Easter thing. Yeah. Well, I have a lot of questions about Easter. It's just all too much. I don't get Easter. All we do is celebrate Jesus' resurrection, but why is it so important? Mm. Okay, I get you. One of the reasons why Easter is so important because it proves that what Jesus said is true. Why is that important? If Jesus lied about raising from the dead, then everything else he said would be a lie. Jesus said he was gonna die and be raised to life many times. So an example of this is in Luke, Luke 9, 22 to 24. Jesus said, the son of man, this is what Jesus called himself, must suffer many things. He'll be rejected by the oldest Jewish leaders, the leading priests and the teachers of the law, and he will be killed. But after three days, he'll be raised to life. If Jesus didn't rise from the dead, he would be a liar. Yeah, I get that. Otherwise, Jesus would just be some crazy guy. He said he was a mortal and he was God's son and he would be able to back up what he said. Exactly. In John 14 verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. How could Jesus claim he was the way if he's dead? A dead person can't show you the way. They're dead. How could Jesus claim he was the truth if he lied about being raised from the dead? How can he claim he was alive if he's dead? A dead person can't be the life. Yeah, that's true. Jesus had to be God because no one could ever predict that he would be raised back to life if he's dead. Yeah, only God can do that. Yeah, I get that. But why is it so important that Jesus is alive? Couldn't he have just died and forgave our sins? Yeah, good question. Well, Jesus being alive proves that we serve a living God. That God doesn't isn't from, you know, the times of Moses and Joseph and Noah and all the other stories we know. But he's alive with us today. But what does it mean when it says Jesus defeated death? Death isn't something where you can put in a headlock and wait for it to tap out. Have you done that? Mm. Okay, fine. What is your biggest fear? Being in a headlock and having to tap out. Okay, well, anyways, mine is either you, mum, or dad, or I'm not being hurt. That is my biggest fear. Aww. <laughs> you, mum, and dad. Am I missing someone? And Anna are the most important people in my life and in the world to me. You guys are the most important thing ever. But Jesus dying the cross means that I don't even have to be scared of even death itself. Because when we die, we don't actually die. We have eternal life. And then we get to go to heaven and God will wipe away every tear from our eyes and that we'll have true joy and happiness. Because Jesus himself conquered death, we have eternal life, just like Jesus does. And because I know that you, mum and dad, and Anna, <laughs> all <laughs> believe in God, and they all believe that Jesus saved them, they will go to heaven. So I don't even have to worry about you guys being hurt, because I know that you guys have an eternal life. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That first part's confusing. Hmm. Okay, so wages of sin. So your parents work, yes? Yeah. They get a wage. Yeah. 
In the case of our lives, because we put our work into sin, so these are things like anger, jealousy, being mean to other people, hurtful words, what you get back is a separation from God. And where God isn't, there is death. But then we see that God swaps in what we've earned with a gift. He said the gift from God is eternal life. So this changes what we earned to what we get for free. So not just after our bodies die that we have this life right now, but then after we die, we get to go and live eternally with him. Wow. But eternal, isn't that a big gift, eternal life? It's like, how do we even earn something like that? Well, that's it. It's a gift. So on your birthday, you get a gift. But did you do anything on your birthday? Mm -mm. No, your mom did all the work. But your mom, because she loves you so much, she's like, you know what? I'm going to celebrate your life. I'm going to give you a gift, even though you didn't earn it. You did nothing. It's the same with God, that it's a gift from God, not something that we could earn, but something he gives us. Eternal life by believing in his son, Jesus Christ. Death and then his new life we can also have that so sin death and fear aren't things that we have to worry about anymore so wait this seems too good to be true how is this even a thing what do you mean like so are you telling me that jesus died on the cross forgave our sins and rose from the dead and now we can live with love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control and we can be in heaven once we die and live with him and we can be children of the most high? Yes. Okay, it just seems a bit unbalanced. God did all that for what? We sin all the time. Christians always make mistakes. In fact, today, I thought you had an especially big forehead. I told dad about it and we laughed together because it was really funny. Even though we sin and say mean things about other people's foreheads, God still loves us. In Romans 8, 31, it says, Since God did not even spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give everything else? In verse 38 to 39, it goes to say, Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries for tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Never, ever, ever feel like God doesn't love you or you're not good enough or you keep sinning and you're like, Lord, how can you love me? Because trust me, we've been there, haven't we? Yep. All time. But God loves you. Yes, you, person who's watching this. God is saying, like how Jesus died and was raised to life, we also die to the sinful part of ourselves and we are made Whoa. new with Christ. So we are crucified with Jesus. So we have to crucify ourselves? No, no, it's not to be taken literally. We don't actually crucify ourselves, but it's getting rid of the old sinful parts of us. These would be things like lying, getting angry easily, jealousy, being mean, but also things like fear, worry, and sadness. Since Jesus was raised to a new life, we also have a new life. So this isn't to be filled with evil things, but we live now under the grace of God. God says that because you are dead to your old self, you can now live new and do good. You don't have to keep sinning, feel bad, and sin some more. Let go of your human weaknesses and let God take over. But how do we do that? I find it hard to just accept what Jesus did for me on the cross because I keep sinning. I feel like I'm being fake towards him. Mm, yeah, you and me both, bro. Honestly, something that I always try to remember is Galatians 2 verse 20. Every time I feel like I'm just being fake and I'm not good enough, and I just feel like the old me, the sinful me, just keeps coming back and again and again, I say this to myself. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in this body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This verse always reminds me that I have the choice to do the right thing and it's never too late to do the right thing. 
I always imagine myself on that cross with Jesus and that he took the place of me, but I must also crucify those things in me which aren't good. Like getting angry very easily. I wanted to beat you up. I have to crucify that part of me because I am now a new creation with Christ. I'm alive like Christ is. As Christ died, I have died. And as Christ lives, I now live and I live a new life. So when I feel like I fail all the time, I just have to remind myself that I'm a new creation. Wow. I try to remember that. This time, I'll know that Jesus has already died on the cross for me and that he's forgiven my sin and he's set me free from every bad thing I've been holding on to. It's always important to keep persevering to try and do the right thing. As long as you're trying, God sees your heart and he's proud of you. What has really helped me is to read my Bible. It's, it's sometimes hard when you first start it because I could be doing so many other things. When I start reading it properly every day, I feel like I'm being the person God has called me to be. And mm. it, that feels good. Yeah, I feel the same way. That's incredible. I think reading your Bible and spending time with God is the way in which we actually can try and be like him. I know you pray with mum. Do you find that useful? Yeah, every time. Mum always helps me and I help her. And we go together in Christ. And it's just a really fun and amazing thing to do together, how we can talk to God uh, side by side. Definitely. I would recommend everybody in Sunday school to ask their parents if they can pray with them. Sometimes it's hard to just keep reminding yourself to pray by yourself, but I'm sure that if you pray with your parents, they would 100% love to pray with you. And it'd be so good that you could bless each other in this way and you can both be like Christ. So what I've learned today is that in Jesus' resurrection, it shows that he is the son of God and that he died on the cross for us to set us free from sin and he defeated death and sickness. And now, we can be children of the Most High God and be in heaven when we die. And it's an amazing thing that it's like that. And we praise you, God, for what you've done. Amen. But also prayer and spending time with God. Because spending time with God, we can find out what God desires for our new life. Because we are raised to a new life with Christ Jesus. Well, I'm sorry for saying you have a big forehead and that your head looks like an aubergine. It's all right. I forgive you. Thank you. Well, anyway, Sunday school. I hope you've had an incredible Easter Sunday. We love you very much and have a great new life with Christ. Bye. Right. That was an amazing story. I love hearing the Easter story over and over and over again. I would listen to that story over and over again if I had a chance to. And we can remind ourselves of the Easter story every day because we are children of God. We know why Jesus came. We know why he died. You know, when they say Good Friday, how can the Friday be good when it was the day that Jesus died? We know that it is good because he died for a good reason. He died to save us from our sins. He died to bring us into God's family. So it wasn't good for him that he suffered and he died, but it was good. But it is good for us because we became part of God's family because of what Jesus did. So thank you, Jesus for dying on that cross for us. We cannot take it for granted. We have to always remember that it was a big sacrifice and that we always have to be grateful and love God and love people because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. So next we are going to have a memory verse from Auntie Jody. Over to you, Auntie Jody. Memory verse of the week. So we see where it is. Luke 19, verse 38. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in the heavens and glory in the highest. Let's say all together. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in the heavens and glory in the highest. Can we remember where it is? Luke 19 verse 38. See you later. Bye. Thank you boys and girls. I hope you are going to learn that memory verse like you do all the other verses. I believe. Anyway. We are going to have our second song right now. Over to you guys. Oh, one, two, three, four.
you very much. I love the worship songs. Oh my goodness, it is so wonderful to praise God. I could sing worship songs all day. I always have songs in the background at home when I'm doing my housework and I sing and dance and it gives me energy to be able to do the chores that I don't like doing. So that is a tip for you. If you don't like doing your homework, put some gospel music in the background or you don't like tidying up your room, put some music in the background and give you the energy to be able to do your jobs. Right, so like I said, last week we had an Easter event and we are going to show you some of the pictures that we took and how much fun we had. All right, thank you. going to motivate you to join in our next event. We do not yet know exactly what day it's going to be, but we will send you out the information as, this, as, as we get it. So look out for the next Zoom event and it will be even more fun. All right. So unfortunately, we have come to the end of the program this morning, but I hope we have all had fun and I hope you always remember that Easter is the great, the biggest, the best time in our calendar, even better than Christmas. So celebrate Jesus, celebrate the resurrection every day because when Jesus resurrected, he defeated the devil, he defeated grave, he defeated death. And so we are alive in Jesus today because he died for us. Right, so we're going to go to Auntie Christine for our closing prayer. Over to you, Auntie Christine. I hope you all enjoyed the story today learning about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and that you've had a blessed time as you've praised God and heard the good things that God has done for us. So now it's time to close in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we do thank you that you're alive. We thank you, Lord, that we can rejoice in the knowledge of who you are. Thank you, Lord, for each boy and girl who's listened and we just pray, Father, that you'll bless them, that you'll keep them safe and that, Lord, that they will lo learn to love you more and to know you more. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Auntie Christine. Right, so we have come to the end of today's um, service and I hope you've had a wonderful time. Right, in the next few weeks, we are going to be learning about the Holy Spirit. I hope you all know what the Holy Spirit is. We know that after Jesus died, 50 days after he died, he sent the Holy Spirit to this earth. But even before he sent the Holy Spirit, God had been speaking to his people in the Old Testament. And we are going to look at some of those encounters that people had with God over the next few weeks. And I hope you will be blessed and I hope you can also remember your own encounters that you've had with the Holy Spirit and with God so that you can tell us about it, tell us testimonies about it as we go through the whole, uh, encounters with the Holy Spirit in the next few weeks. All right, then you take care and God bless you and we'll see you again next week. Bye. Thank you for watching Children's Church. Please click on the thumbs up below to say you like us. And then click on the subscribe button. The subscribe button is free. And if you click on the little bell, you'll be told when we're on again. Thanks for watching. Bye.